Hello, welcome. Um, this is, in fact, my fifth effort at making a video uh, discussing um, content relevant to Module 7 um, as we go forward in our applied pre-calculus course at Montclair State University. Um, I actually just purchased the software yesterday and started familiarizing myself with it today and uh, I I've essentially spent an entire day blabbing at my computer only to find that for whatever reason for formatting or uh, not saving that um, I am not understanding the software well. Um, uh, I actually had a video together for all of the content you're seeing in the slide, 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, it was very long, it was um, long, an hour and 15 minutes I'd say, and went to save it and it disappeared for whatever reason. So uh, I think I'm going to attempt now to uh, take a bite-sized chunk and just talk about question one in module seven, investigation one. So Module 7, Investigation 1, Question 1 asks us a very, uh, I don't know what word I would use to describe the question. What is an angle? What is an angle? And uh, I'd like you all to maybe pause the video and think for a moment about if you were accosted by an alien or, or a younger sibling and asked to describe what an angle is what your approach would be. Would you draw them something? Um, what, how would you create a schematic to, um, depicting uh, or illustrating what an angle is? All right, so I'm gonna be brave here and attempt to toggle my computer screen and use the textbook definition of what an angle is, and they, as some of you might have described it as, um, uh, two rays which share a common endpoint, um, and um, the the angle is this is this um, amount of uh, I like to call it openness formed between the two rays. Let me try and toggle back now. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'm now going to change that question slightly. And instead of saying, just crudely speaking, what an, what an angle is, let's ask uh, a perhaps more specific question. And that is, well, really what we're asking is, how do you measure an angle? But um, what does it mean for an angle to have a measure of one degree. Let's think about that for a moment. Okay, so back to our question. What does it mean for an angle to have a measure of one degree? So um, maybe some of you thought that, well, yeah, one degree, 10 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, um, we could describe an entire circle with how many degrees? With 360 degrees. And so um, we might say that um, one degree is equivalent to the proportion one three hundred and sixtieth of a circle's uh, total openness or circumference. Circumference. That's to say if I had a pizza and it were possible to slice it into 360 pieces, take a pretty big pizza to do that uh, with any accuracy, and one of those slices would um, be a way to represent one degree. So part B of exercise one asks us which of the angles below has the smallest measure and which of the angles has the largest measure, and what are you focusing on to determine which angle has the largest measure and which has the smallest measure? 
And so if we, let's stick to this description of an angle's measure as, as the amount of its openness, you probably focused on um, uh, a larger angle measure um, having this property where if we, we maintain or, or fix this horizontal ray and we sweep out another ray from attached at this common endpoint, the vertex right here, that, um, that, that angle A is less than angle C and angle C is less than, we should say, less open than angle B. Okay, now part C um, takes those um, takes those angles from part B and now um, uses their vertices as the center of a circle with what appears to be the same circumference and asks the same question, um, which appears to be the smallest and the largest. And key here is what quantity we're focusing on to determine which angle has the largest measure. And here in bold, you see that you could, in this scenario, look at um, this, this bold segment, which is um, this, this arc segment of arc or segment of the circumference, and the amount of openness uh, we, we would say subtends that arc. Uh, and again, we'd arrive at the same conclusion that angle A is smaller than C and angle C is smaller than B. Key here is in this context, we focus on what? We focus on the length of the arc subtending the openness beneath it. Okay, so now moving forward to part D, we're asked to use our response from part C to describe what it means for two angles to have the same measure. So what I'd like to do here is uh, call upon one of the applets available to us with our textbook, the protractor out applet. Uh, let me see if I can do that without making my computer burn. All right, let's see now. All right, screen. All right, so hoping this works. So I have the Protractor app open, and what I'd like to do is um, uh, keep the amount of openness uh, subtended by um, arc AB, or, or described by the measure of angle BDA, BDA. I want to keep that fixed and I'm going to extend this diameter in this manner. All right. All right, so we're keeping our openness fixed and what I'm hoping you all will see, I'm sure I'm doing a very bad job at explaining this, what I want you all to see is regardless of the circumference or the length of the uh, radius, uh, this, this pie-shaped segment for uh, this circle of, of radius 3.78 versus the pie-shaped segment formed um, when AD is, when the radius is two feet, that this, this slice of pizza, this section of the circle, still represents the same proportion of the overall cir circle, regardless of the circumference of the circle, or that's to say the diameter of the circle. Let's see if I can get out of this. So for now, for part D, we'll just say that um, for, for angles to have the same measure, um, that means 
that they uh, will say, let's stick to our openness uh, description. We'll say that they have the same openness. They have the same openness. 